I've got a bunch of projects started here, and in this video, I'm not going to finish any of them. What I have here is a set of boarding passes for my whole family, and it's for a one-way flight that leaves tomorrow. We are going from the El Paso airport to Bradley in Connecticut, a little bit of a distance away. Now I don't actually live in Texas and the cheapest way to get there to get to the airport is a rental car. Driving a personality free appliance like that makes you really appreciate vehicles like that one. They're just so much more fun. Well, we made it here and now that we're here, we need to get back home. But, this time it's not going to be flying. That's the ride. This is a 1953 Kenworth bus. Uh, this actually belongs to my dad. 20 years ago, he used to drive it around the country. Since then, it's been sitting a little while. And it's been started every once in a while. But it hasn't really been on the road very much. Mostly it's been collecting tree debris. So we're going to drive this over 2,000 miles. Which seems like a totally good idea. The good thing is, right before my dad bought this, it was repowered with a 6BT and an Allison transmission. So there actually is a lot of good stuff driving it. It's just a matter of little odds and ends that, you know, keep you going that we need to worry about. My brother-in-law put new tires on it, so it's got fresh rubber. I don't need to worry about a blowout. Let's take a look around. The roof has a natural protective layer. Um, I'm sure that'll help with insulation. You can actually inspect your brakes through the rim, which is handy. So we know they're there. This thing is pretty large. Uh, it's about 34 feet long, and uh, that gives you a lot of room inside. However, it does hamper the maneuverability a little bit. Uh, that could be an issue. I'm not used to driving anything this long, but it's cool and it's our only way home. So we're gonna make this work, probably. I think so, we should make this work. You know, here's the good stuff. <laughs> Kind of good stuff. Now the good thing is, sometime last century, this bus has been repowered with a 6BT Cummins. It's a good old 12 valve. It's the early model with the smaller pump. It doesn't have that inline pump. It actually has a water to air intercooler, so that's good. And it has an Allison automatic transmission too. So the drivetrain is a good basics to start with. But this has been off the road for a while, and even when it was on the road, and a lot of problems with the cooling system. That never worked right. And what we have here is a very big radiator, but it only runs electric cooling fans. And right now, only one of those works. So my first step is to get both those working and then fix anything else I find along the way. Looks like we have the original 1950s wiring up here. And then we've got a battery added. It used to have two batteries, but that's just jumpered over to do one bigger one. Another jumper connection in the battery cables. There's another battery over there, but I think that's to run interior stuff. Um, seeing a lot of stray fuse holders here and there. Relay, that's good. Now the cooling fans, we've got an inline fuse holder and another inline fuse holder and wire nuts and a relay that's just a little bit crusty. Uh, same with the circuit breakers. Oh, hey, that one just kind of flops. That's good. And then we have the fans. So let's start digging into this and see what works and what doesn't. Luckily, when everything's done with the wire nuts, it's really easy to check for power. Checking all the wiring in this fan, it definitely has power going to it. Might have an issue with the motor itself. So it turns on when I hit it. Maybe brushes are stuck inside. I see more fans back here on the other side of the radiator. So we're just going to take this off and see if those work. Four fans are better than two, which is better than one, which is what I currently have. When the fan is labeled works with a question mark on it, it's never a good sign. I was looking around at the wires trying to figure out what to do. At least I saw something. Hopefully I can get out of here. Looks potentially useful. Another cooling fan. Just like the one that doesn't work back there. 
So uh, let's pop this one in. The old frame had a bunch of brackets specifically made for this bus, so I thought it was a good idea to change it. You have to get a wrench on the back side of these bolts, and uh, you can't, they don't fit. So I've been jamming a screwdriver next to the bolt. So far it's worked. Except for the ones I had to cut off, the rusty ones. And in goes the new one, hopefully. And by new, I mean a used one I found under the seat that I hope works. New fan is in, let's try it out. There's a win. Let's do a quick review of the controls and layout of this thing. There's two dashboards, one down there and one up here. That's the original one. And uh, my dad added this one because it was easier to see. If anyone recognizes that shape, that's actually out of the FC-150 that I made the cover wagon out of. And that's the dashboard from that Jeep. So I know that everything in this dashboard he added. So this is probably what works mostly. Hopefully some of that works too. The speedometer starts off reading at 5, so that's not a good sign. Tachometer, I'm sure, is from the old engine. That, I'm sure, doesn't work. That's the only fuel gauge, so hopefully that works. Voltmeter there. A voltmeter here. Trans oil temperature, water, oil pressure, air pressure, because this thing has air brakes. You get the little thing that swings down when you have low air pressure. Tachometer, voltmeter and thermometer. Uh, old ignition switch. That one has a new label on it, so I bet this does something. We have something for spraying the radiator. My dad added this to uh, cool it down when it was overheating. That's something. I think those might be some kind of marker light or auxiliary light. CB. Not sure what this is. Don't know what that does. Lots of fuse holders. There's lots of stuff here. We should be able to do something with all of it. So let's try and do a cold start. I don't even know if there's a preheater. I don't think there is. I think we're just firing it off cold. Let's see how that goes. That's what's going to be the confidence to even attempt this trip, so I'm sure that's a good engine. Just got to get everything else to work along with it. Got oil pressure, we've got air pressure. Let's try and move this thing. Oh, I forgot. Got a backup camera here. There we go. Now I can see what I'm going to run over. No power steering in this. Make sure my fans still work while I'm here. Yep, I can feel airflow. Let me shut this off and show you what I did there. Now I mentioned that cooling has always been an issue on this bus. It might have been ever since this engine was put in. The way it was set up, the engines are the center of the back. There's a radiator off to the side. And this is a good size radiator. That thing is... Oh, probably close to three feet tall and two feet wide. There's a lot of area there. And it was set up with electric fans blowing air out the back through this vent here in the back lid. And the air came in this side. Normally there was a grate there, I just took it off to work on fans. But that would be the air intake. In order to get it to work better, my dad added some fans. I'm pretty sure these ones were added. And then he added this scoop to the side to scoop the air in as he drove. Now that worked okay, but it was marginal. And on long hills or at high speeds, it always heated up. I got to do some thinking about this, and I'm gonna try an experiment here. Right here, we have the spare parts bus. And this is one my dad picked up. I think someone gave it to him just to get out of their yard, but he picked it up for parts for that other bus. Now this one also has the rear engine. This is a gas engine. Now this might be the original gas engine, but it looks like the opening has been enlarged quite a bit on the back here, and that doesn't quite look factory. Uh, looks like it was someone just cut it in there. You can see the big V8 in there. Now on that fan, the blades are curved this way, so that as it spins, it would push the air that way. Which means on this bus, the air went in that hole, instead of out like you'd expect with the normal way something travels. So I'm wondering, with the air that goes over the bus, spins around and goes backwards in there, 
and my dad has been fighting with his electric fans trying to push it the opposite way it naturally wants to go. When I wired up those electric fans, I wired them all opposite so they'll blow the other way. So now these fans are gonna draw air from the back where there's a lot of air under the engine and all that, suck the air away and dump it out the side. Now, as the bus moves along, obviously the air is going this way and I don't wanna get it caught and shoved that way to make it opposite. So I'm gonna take the same scoop, flip it over, put it on the front edge and hopefully this will act like a vent window and actually have the air come out, drawing air from here out too. And hopefully I'll naturally have suction here, sucking all the heat out of the engine compartment and going over the radiator. Which also means hot air is gonna be going over the radiator. There's so much coming from under the engine, I think this won't be an issue, but we'll find out. And worst case scenario, I reverse them and move everything around and put it back to the way it was. Got the scoop all mounted. It's on a hinge and there's a bolt with a wing nut and different holes I can put it in so I can pivot the whole thing out. Hopefully this will work as is, it doesn't stick out too far, but I can go out farther and create more turbulence where the air gets sucked here and hopefully draws air out of the radiator there. At least that's the theory. The rust on the pulley ate up the belt. That's all rubber. And uh, the belt is now a lot thinner than it used to be. I found an old spare one with lots of uh, cracking in it. You can see what it used to be before this was used for about 15, 20 minutes. So, gotta take the belt off, de-rust the pulley, and then get a new belt for it. I'm gonna spin this a little. It's like a lathe. Huh, sounds a little funny. Hopefully the bearings aren't as rusty as the pulley is. Then I got a brand new one of the fancy green belts, so it should be perfect. I don't think it's allowed to break now. All right, let's see what we got. Yep, definitely a generator and lots of mice. The mice debris is mostly on the bottom. I don't see that much. A couple acorns here and there. Let's pull those out of there. Apparently these acorns weren't good enough to eat. There's still some nut left in them. I don't see anything else that looks like it's going to catch on fire. So uh, let's try starting this thing up. Now in here is the generator control stuff. We've got the coolant overflow, uh, radiator fan, heat and pump. Don't know what those do. Another red light. I don't know what it does. Temperature gauge. And we've got an Isuzu control panel for preheat and start which also has temperature, charging, oil pressure, that good kind of stuff. Let's give this thing a shot. It's raining, so I figured that'd be a good time to try out the wipers. I have absolutely no idea how to turn them on. I've tried every switch. I know that's the fan. I've already worked with that. I think that's backup lights. Another fan. I don't even know what these do. They just sort of turn. They feel like a valve more than anything. Okay, nothing there. Still nothing. This is a switch for an electric sander. Doesn't seem to work, but I think that puts sand under the rear tires if you need traction. Nothing with that switch. Switch under the dashboard. Nope. What's this? Oh, cigarette lighter plug. Don't need that, hopefully. Nope. On off. Okay, so that's the heater control. And something has fallen in the heater hitting the blade. So that's got to come apart. Another gauge over here. Nope. That doesn't do anything. I know the wipers exist. There's got to be some way to turn them on. Well, I've tried every single switch I see and nothing does it. So, huh, I need to look for switches I don't see. That's convenient. I ended up having to call my dad. See this little piece of tubing here? That's the switch for the windshield wipers, the tube. I did not expect that. 
got the heater apart. Looks like this wire is uh, running into the fan blades, and that was the sound. So I'm just going to add this twist tie. The grate was too small for a zip tie, so we're going to have to go second rate right here, but I think it'll work. That's better. I bought the cheapest 16 inch electric fan I could find. I'm going to install it as a puller on this side in place of those two tiny ones that don't seem to work. This will probably help. One thing that's not helping, I don't know if you can see it behind me, but it's snowing now. It actually does make it more fun. It's more interesting now. It's funny. Normally a 16 inch fan looks pretty big. It looks tiny in this thing. Snow stopped already. Only got a little bit, but at least it was fun while it lasted. So I got to get back to work on this. I think I have the last connection made and ready to try this thing out. Checking the transmission fluid is a little nerve wracking. You got to do it running. And the sticks back there, the face goes next to this. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Hopefully I don't need to do that again. I've run into a new problem when I went to close the engine compartment. This has just been moved around the yard for many, many years. No one's ever actually latched that hood to keep it closed. Now that I want to take it on the road, that's probably going to be important. No one knows where the key is that operates it. It's got a little square drive latch. That seemed easy enough to operate. And I went to turn it and it moves a little bit, but the pins are stuck in place. So I'm worried if I do get this latched, I won't be able to get it open again. That'll be fine. I'm sure it'll last. Now under this bed is a bunch of storage. You just lift it up. And this is where my dad kept a lot of tools and spare parts. I don't actually know what's in here. It'd probably be a smart move to figure that out to see if I have enough spare parts and tools. But that would take a lot of time, and it looks like we have lots of things here. So I'm sure there's enough to fix any problem I encounter. Probably. There are mice living here. Lots of mice. Uh, we gotta do something about that. Found this on Amazon. Uh, it's a GPS speedometer with a big number for speed. Much better than the speedometer that doesn't work. Went to the first truck stop, gonna do a check over. Brakes are cold, tires are cold, bearings are cold. That's good. Yep, tires are good. Now all the way around, everything looks good. So that's nice. Okay, time to add a pile of fuel. First series of problems, starter stopped working. I got nothing. I'm gonna try the standard fix. Apparently this panel where the starter switch is comes down easy. Let's see if we can just temper it here. Back in business. The solution to the starter issue actually turned out to be pretty easy. What I needed to do was take the shift lever and move it from drive, where I left it when I shut it off, to neutral. And then the neutral safety switch lets the starter operate. I feel like an idiot. But at least that's one mistake I won't have to repeat. Probably. Hopefully. First day, New York. And we're doing well. Is this the Hudson River, I think? Yeah. We got Pennsylvania. Everything looks like it's going well. Kind of amazing. Going over the Potomac River, and here is West Virginia. Yesterday we made it through Connecticut, New York, Pennsylvania, Maryland, I missed a sign to that one, and West Virginia. Uh, so now we're in West Virginia, and I'm pretty impressed. We're going really well. But I started losing my signal lights on that side, which I thought was a flaky bulb, which is a problem I had initially. But uh, I'm turning on the hazards now, and everything works. Let me try the individual signal lights. 
That side works. That side doesn't. Now we can go this way. There's the hazard. So, I think the problem's in this switch. This lever actually pushes these two buttons. You have this one, which makes it blink. And this is the other way, which also makes it blink. So somehow it's just that lever isn't pushing this button all the way. So that looks not that hard to fix, hopefully. Oh, it's harder than I thought. The thing that presses them is this piece of metal here. It's not on that side. Here's a little piece that broke off. I notice on this side, it's right in line with the bend on this little light holder. I tried putting a screw underneath that bend and having it stick down. It doesn't stick down far enough. Luckily, I'm in a Walmart parking lot. So uh, I think I find the exact right length screw I need there, possibly some JB Weld, and put this thing together. Well, I put a bolt with a nut on the bottom, and we've got signaling now. So now we have our left turn again. Now the only real problem is that nut there hits the hazard light slider. So I'm not going to have hazard lights. That's okay. Even after five states, that natural insulation is holding up well. That's some durable stuff. I might actually have to wash this someday. I'm going to brother on upon these tires, and I know he torqued them down, right? Because he's good at this kind of stuff. But now that it's been driven, I want to retorque them just to be sure. I want them to turn a tiny little bit so far. There's the first 10 lug nuts. Now I got to do the rest. Apparently, with the rain going, I did find the windshield wipers, but I forgot to take a picture of the sign going into Virginia. Uh, so, miss that video clip. But we are in Virginia and rolling along again. There's Tennessee. Made it this far. And immediately there's a Bass Pro Shops. Stopping for the night in Tennessee. Now it's time to see if any of the hookups still work. This looks like a plug-in cable. Let's see if it reaches. Oh, I plugged it. You can tell this hasn't been straight in a few decades. I believe we have power. There might be an extension cord inside somewhere. Look for that. That's not an extension cord. That's an adapter. What's this? This is another adapter. This will give me a few feet. Well, all right, a foot and a half or so. We'll go with that. That looks fine. Mixing up a batch of JB Weld to fix that turn signal. Got to be quiet, though, because the rest of my family's in the back asleep. But I want to get this done tonight so it can be dry by tomorrow. I'd like to have the hazard lights working also. And the only thing preventing that is the nut on the screw. If I glue the screw in place, I don't think I need the nut. So then I think we have a fully functional repair. This is what I got. Never be able to change that light bulb again, but I don't know if I really care. We'll see if it dries up in the morning. Hopefully it'll work. Time to test the repair and see if it worked. Yep. Doing the daily fluids check. For some reason the transmission dipstick keeps popping out. We're gonna have to check on that. Oil level looks fine. This belt is looking a little loose. We're gonna tighten that. Coolant looks like we're running low on the reservoir, but there's a sight glass on the radiator that looks okay. So I'll just add a little more to the reservoir. And we have a red indicator on the air filter. So that means the filter needs cleaning or something. There we go. That's tight. Oh, it moves. That's good. I think I should oil that. 
still rusty, but better. All right, let's see if we can get this bottom off. There we go. Now it's moving. Oh, it's black. Huh. I don't have a spare. Huh. Let's figure out what to do now. Ooh, we got a vacuum cleaner. I'll try that. I don't think that's doing any good at all. Found a Napa in Greenville, Tennessee, and they had the filter in stock. A little bit different in color. There's my old one. So uh, we should get a little more airflow through this one. Now, I don't think I showed you this before. The reason I knew the air filter was dirty was this little air filter minder. And if you've never seen this before, it's sort of cool. So we have the air filter, the air goes through here, and that's where it sucks it into the turbo. So this intake here, if that gets clogged, creates a vacuum. And then this tube goes to this filter minder. You can see the red there. When I go to reset it, I press the top, it's green. So basically what happens is the vacuum pulls that up and turns it to red when your filter's too dirty. As long as the air is flowing through there freely, I won't build up the vacuum, that'll stay green. And hopefully, the white filter will do it. There we go. We're back in business. Well, I'm here. I noticed I got a flap flapping. Some zip ties should take care of that. Much better. Now entering Georgia. Now we get to Alabama. It was supposed to go down to 25 degrees last night and we only have one space heater in the bus and that needs 110. It got late, we didn't find a place to plug in. We stayed at a hotel because uh, they have heat all the time. It's kind of nice. So we're ready to get back on the road again, doing my pre-flight checklist here. And I went to look at the air filter minder because I figured, hey, that's gotta be good since it has a new filter. And uh, it wasn't. We're back to red again. So I'm gonna reset it. I really don't think there's a clog in this tube because it doesn't look like anything got past that air filter. There's a possibility the system is just for the original engine and this motor sucks more air than the original engine did. I don't know. But there's nothing I can do about it. I know there's a new filter in there, so I'm going to ignore it. That's what I can do about it. The coolant level looks low, so uh, we're going to top off that tank, get it back up to the line. The transmission dipstick popped out again. We're just going to push that in and ignore it. I thought about trying to tie it down, but if there's a clogged vent, that might be the venting. So I don't want to overpressurize the transmission and cause a bigger problem. So we're just going to ignore that because we're on paved roads. There shouldn't be too much dirt. The belt seems still plenty tight. We're good there. Engine oil looks good. So I'm going to cop off the coolant and get back on the road. Noticed a puddle under us at Walmart and that's coolant. So I'm tracing the wetness up here and there's drips here and drips there and it looks like this connection is leaking oh yeah oh we got coolant coming out definitely slid on a bit farther so i was about ready to pop off glad i saw the leak i think we're going to add another hose clamp there too just in case oh hey got another one right here too same thing I wonder if that's a straight pipe and no one added a bead on there. That'd be bad. Gonna tighten all the ones up here too. It looks like everything is a little bit loose. Bomber only had a variety pack of hose clamps, which didn't have big enough ones I need. But luckily I have some small ones too. So I'm gonna take a small clamp, attach it to a big clamp, and make it into an even bigger clamp that'll actually do what I want. Something like that. Double clamped here, double clamped here. 
Hopefully that does it. Now I mentioned the cold weather. Apparently the entire country is freezing. So we headed straight south. We're in Florida. No fans at all on. And we're running 180 on these uh, little back roads here. So the air is definitely moving the right direction to keep that radiator cool. Now all we have is a heater running. It's actually too cold. No fans at all. Just the heater core. At that speed. Here's the end of the U.S. Going to an island next. Hopefully everything goes well. <laughs> Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Looks like it's going well so far. Those buildings that this are attached to the U.S., we're not. This seems like a good place to hole up till the rest of the country warms up, because it's not too bad here, and it's just supposed to get warmer in the next few days. So I think I'm going to pause here, stop driving for a little bit, and we'll pick up again when we start heading west. This has been a real big adventure and a lot of fun. Hope you guys are having fun too, and we'll see you next time. That's neat. The way the root is swinging makes a smile on the side of the sand wall here. It's like a tiny little drawing tool, just digging in constantly. That's kind of funny.